Mick Veach, Shadow Minister for Agriculture in New South Wales. Thanks for joining us again on Flow. Yeah, no, not, not a problem. Good morning. Now, um, first of all, can we talk about this interesting hearing or a meeting of the Legislative Council that occurred yesterday? Uh, how long did it go for? About an hour and then it was all shut down? Yeah, about an hour it went for. There was a, um, a, a lengthy discussion or debate around a point of order taken by um, a member of the government um, regarding the, what is referred to as the state of the house. Essentially, um, you need to have uh, for the Legislative Council to sit. The standing order say we need to have a minister or or a parliamentary secretary uh, in the chamber to make it a court, make it correct. And when it comes to that, though, there was some discussion I saw on Twitter about: is it more so to make sure the government turns up, or is it about the legitimacy of the meeting of the council? It's more about the legitimacy of the, uh, the meeting of the council. But the re- yesterday was really about the government turning up to, uh, you know, so we could hold them accountable um, for the decisions they've been making. You know, the upper house's role is a house of review. Our job is to scrutinise the actions and decisions of government. Uh, and we can only really do that if the house sits. The house was scheduled to sit um, and uh, you know, the, government, the government didn't turn up. Has there been, was there debate yesterday about whether this has ever occurred in New South Wales's history, that the government's ministers have refused to turn up for a sitting? I think it's the first time they've refused to, to turn up uh, to commence a sitting. It has happened in the past where um, the House has found itself without a minister uh, or, or a parliamentary secretary in the chamber whilst it was sitting. So the House had actually you know, previously had been operating and undergoing business and for whatever reason there was no minister in the House. Um, so I, I would suggest it's probably the first time that they haven't actually turned up to start the House. What does this tell us about the Berejiklian and Barilaro government uh, attitude towards Parliament and accountability? Look, parliamentarians in New South Wales under the health orders are listed as essential workers. That means, um, you know, most MPs I know are going about their day-to-day routines, helping people with the health orders and the like. But the only place we can scrutinise the actions and decisions of government is when the Parliament sits. The Legislative Council is the House of Review, uh, as everyone knows, um, and for us to be able to undertake our functions, we need the Parliament to sit. Uh, you can be cynical in your thoughts as to why the government does not want the Parliament to sit. We have not, we have not had a sitting of Parliament since June. Uh, it's now a long period of time whereupon the Parliament has been unable to scrutinise the decisions of government. And I know some government members have called this a stunt, but that doesn't do them justice. It is not a stunt trying to scrutinise uh, the actions of government. And was it, um, is there any consolation in what uh, Minister Coothope has said about, uh, oh, well, we'll catch it up, we'll have some sittings later on to make up for it? I, I would suggest that's an acknowledgement that the government members know they've got this wrong. I think, I think Mr Tudorhope's statements yesterday would reflect the fact that the government realised they got this wrong. The, the, most residents of New South Wales, most essential workers, are going about their jobs. The nurses, uh, you know, the police officers... Uh, there's a range of other people going to school teachers, going about their work. Um, if the parliamentarians are good enough to be listed as essential workers on, on the health order by the government, then it is good enough for parliamentarians to turn up to work, including the government members, that is, at parliament. Now, um, Amik Veach, we, as your shadow portfolio includes um, agriculture, uh, the, we've been um, chasing a number of agriculture ministers around our broadcast areas, including uh, Minister Marshall, about this issue of uh, getting workers in for the imminent harvests, and especially the grain harvest, which isn't far off. And uh, you've announced subsequently this East Coast Agriculture Task Force. Bit of fanfare around that, but has much happened since? Oh, look, to be fair, this is a, too little, too late. Last year, when, when we had to close our international borders because of uh, the COVID pandemic, we realised very quickly that we, were, we didn't have enough shearers to shear our sheep, that we didn't have enough harvest operators to harvest our grain, and we didn't have enough fruit diggers to pick our fruit and vegetables. That was last year. So for the, fact, for the minister to announce an East Coast uh, task force on the first day of spring this year is way, way too late. Uh, the minister knew last year it was going to be a problem, and there should have been a sig- substantial body of work undertaken by state and federal ministers to make sure we have the work, uh, the work crews available. The work, the you know, domestic workforce was in fit enough shape to be able to meet the needs and the requirements of what is going to be a bumper season. Uh, to announce a task force when the season is nigh upon us uh, is really quite appalling. And what uh, has Labor put some policy propositions out about what it would do if it was in government or what it thinks should be done in this area, what improvements there might need to be? 
Yeah, look, we spoke last year about the fact there's a degree of urgency um, around ensuring we have a skilled uh, workforce able to shear our sheep, harvest our grain, pick our fruit and vegetables. That was last year. Um, a part of this, you, you just can't have people turn up and operate a grain, a, a grain harvester. You can't have people turn up and just shear sheep. It takes These are skilled jobs that take time to learn. Uh, we need to have in place the adequate uh, training capacity um, across the state to enable us to, to train people to do, undertake those tasks. But when it comes to the, the lesser skilled tasks, such as the fruit picking and vegetable picking, um, there should have been incentives put in place. I mean, the farming groups have been talking to me uh, for quite some time about their proposals. I'd like to know whether the Minister gave any, any um, credence to those, those suggestions at all. Did the Minister actually meet with the stakeholder groups and take up some of their suggestions? When you look at Victoria or Queensland even, um, those governments have put in place uh, processes and arrangements to attract workers to their state to undertake the, the significant task of picking our fruit and vegetables. What did the New South Wales government do? They announced the task force. That is way short of what is required uh, of, of the minister. Well, I see the New South Wales Farmers Lobby Group have taken to even promoting an organisation on Facebook looking to recruit former Defence Force personnel to help run heavy machinery like harvesters. Is that an indicator of how desperate the situation's becoming? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And again, when I've been talking to the stakeholder groups, uh, they've they've all had suggestions of what can be done, and and you know most of those suggestions should have been um, they all they all had merit, and I think they should have been considered and uh, looked at implementation. Um, some of them replicated what is in other jurisdictions like Victoria or Queensland, but the reality is to announce an East Coast task force on the first day of spring when the harvest is just about upon us is is an indictment on the minister. This the minister has been sitting on his hands, uh, knowing full well since last year that this was going to be a problem this year. Uh, why wait till now? Well, in the end, hopefully uh, those agricultural production and um, income figures that came out from ABARES yesterday and during this week, hopefully that doesn't get uh, nobbled by the lack of labour availability. So um, keep us informed of what you, um, the opposition saying about this issue. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the reality is we do need to in- in- improve our, our training capacity and our incentives uh, to encourage people within our own domestic workforce to take up these jobs. That's the first thing. And those, those, and we should communicate those. And they should have been in place quite a long time ago. Uh, Mick Veach, Shadow Minister for Agriculture in New South Wales, thanks for joining us on Flow. Thank you. And you have a-